guys, Radical Reds here, and I am here to talk about uh, what you see in the thumbnail. SNES Classic in the house, so finally got one. So uh, I know everybody was all on the hype train about it before, and you know, waiting in long lines, and Scott was trying to resell them, and they're gonna be out of stock or whatever, but Nintendo's been really keeping good on their promise about keeping these things in stock, and as we know, they'll probably, uh, I'm pretty sure they're gonna re do the uh, rebrand the NES Classic again, so people would get their hands on that. But anyway, SNES Classic was more of the system for me because uh, I really wanted to play Star Fox 2, the original build of it, uh, the final version of it. Uh, there was rumors out there here, out there that this game existed. And uh, I remember 20 years ago, me and my buddy were going to ride it and we were reading about the new Star Fox 2 in a Nintendo Power. And you know, it was kind of sad it never came out, but like 20 years later, I hit him up, say, hey man, it's finally coming out. He's oh wow, cool. So um, there, there, there is the, the leaked version of it which I'm going to compare to this version as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, Star Fox 2 is officially released. That's pretty badass. And it's actually a really good game. So anyways, guys, I just want to do a little breakdown of the system. And uh, let's take a look. So I didn't want to do like an unboxing of me taking everything out. That'd be kind of lame, especially at this point in time. But uh, here you get two controllers, um, really authentic to the original Super Nintendo controllers. Uh, and getting two, uh, you know, gives you uh, well, that's the extra twenty dollars you spend on this system over the NES Classic because you get that second controller. And of course, here you have the uh, the plug, and then you have the HDMI cord. So. Nothing really much to say about this, uh, just good looking at it bare bones. So let's try it out and see how it is. All right, here's the menu for it. Uh, I don't, you guys can see this, but I, I added some of my own games to it. You know, these are must haves. You know, you gotta have Turtles in Time on this sucker, but let's try Unholy Night. Unholy Night is a recently released fighting game. Uh, you could buy it on Amazon. I think it was like 50 or 60 bucks. So I can't remember, but six characters. Huh. Moves kind of sluggish. Uh, I don't know. If, yeah. This is definitely not anything I'm going to recommend to anybody. But hey, on Holy Night, if you want to see how it plays, this is it. All right, let's move on to the next game here. Let's, you know, let's go to the other menu. Ah, 100% cotton. I forgot I put that on here. So 100% Cotton is a shoot 'em up game. Uh, as you know, it's a cute 'em up. Uh, the Cotton series uh, isn't really well known in America because it was only mostly in Japan. Uh, but the Super Nintendo one is like a spin-off of the original game. Very colorful, uh, cute voices, good soundtrack, uh, lots of fluid animation. Uh, and one thing I didn't like though about the game, I, I think a lot of that green should be at least blue I don't know maybe that's just me but anyways other than that that's just a pet peeve the game is really nice lots of fun see this is what I was talking about right here it should be like a blue sky you know but, but yeah whatever all right next game we're gonna try out oh yeah never gotta go with Brawl Brothers Brawl Brothers is the second game in the Russian Beat series, and I, I consider it the best game in the, in the series. Uh, uh, I still go with the original names of the characters from the first game, Rival Turf. Jack Flack and Ozzy Nelson, or Uzi Nelson, I can't remember what his name was, but Jack Flack, that's just a funny name to give a character, and it was so silly, it just, it just stuck with me, you know, so I, I still call him Jack Flack, even though, though that's not his original name. Now, this is one fluid fighting game, you know, it doesn't feel stiff at all. It feels like you can move around, your character could taunt, which is pretty funny. Uh, you get super special moves, which are really nice, lots of combos and stuff. Uh, it has that effect where you, you, you hit an enemy and it makes it like the Batman poof, bam, and all that stuff. Those, those little uh, quotations or whatever. But uh, yeah, fun game. Uh, not even not even that expensive either, you know, it's definitely uh, the better one in the series. And I think it's still pretty cheap. All right, next on the menu here. No, not, not Demon's Crest. Castlevania, Dracula X, everybody's seen that one. 
Let's see what we can get here. Uh, let's go with Ghost Chaser. So Ghost Chaser is an expensive uh, beat-em-up game. Uh, came out in Japan only. Uh, came out in arcades too, as a sequel in the arcade as well. But uh, the Super Nintendo got a, a dumbed-down version of it, which is still really good, actually. Uh, but if you want to buy this game, it's going to cost you like $200 for the cart only. So just be aware of that. You know, um, I, I myself bought a repo cart for it. And not only that, which is cool, they, they already translated the game in English on the repo cart. So there's that. All right, Ghost Sweeper. Uh, this is a, this game is cool. This is based on an anime series. Uh, the series came out in Japan. I don't know when, but uh, they actually translated in English, I believe, over here. Uh, but I've never seen it, but I heard good things about it. But the game is pretty awesome. Sad thing about the game is, even though it's really good, I heard the developer went under after this game came out. So that's kind of sad to hear. But really fun game. Kind of like plays like the Castlevania games, if you like those. So... I know everybody likes Castlevania. I mean, if you don't like Castlevania, I don't, there's something wrong with you. But anyway, it's pretty simple, easy to get into. Oh yeah, so next game here, we're gonna do a Poppin' Twin B. Uh, this is uh, the PAL version, which is in English. And it's kind of sad that this game never came over to America. Uh, Golly, I mean, so many good games that should have came to America, man. I just, oh, man, it's kind of sad looking back at the library. But, but luckily so now, you know, you can play a lot of these games easy. So uh, really good game, uh, very colorful. Uh, the scrolling is kind of slow, which it gets on my nerves a little bit, you know, but that's okay. It's a simple uh, shoot 'em up game. Um, yeah, uh, very fun in the series. I, my actually, my personal favorite is actually the Yahoo game, which was the last game in the, in, uh, for the 10th anniversary. I did a review on that one. Oh yeah, you know we're gonna go with R-Type. R-Type is fast-paced action. And it, being a shoot 'em up man, this this is a hard type shoot 'em up because this is a shoot 'em up where you get killed, you have to start at checkpoints, which gets on my nerves. I, that kind of kills the pacing for me. Especially now that I'm older, man, my nerves are, are getting to me. So, you know, I can't stand, like, getting killed and starting back at this checkpoint, re redoing stuff over and over again. It just gets monotonous. So, uh, but still a solid game. Uh, I'm pretty good at it. But still, like I said, just be aware that you get killed, you got to start at checkpoints in this game. One hit deaths. All right, so next game here, I guess we're gonna go into the menu here, another menu. And let's see what's on this side here. Oh, Cats Run. Cats Run is definitely a game I found out by chance. A uh, very fun racing game. Uh, basically, it's kind of like, a, what's that movie, Smokey and the Bandit, I think it was? Um, you're racing all across the world trying to get to uh, some kind of some kind of reward or whatever. I I, I haven't got I, well. I almost I was playing the game for like 30 minutes and I was like in first place a while back. And that, and the race is just so long, man. It's like geez, but it's a lot of fun though. I love how it shows your character like turning as you turn in the little icon below. That's pretty cool. But just be aware, this game has the rubber band effect. So you know, even though you're in the front, you know, you can make a simple mistake and everybody catches up to you, which is annoying. All right, so the next game here, let's check out, uh, yeah, Kindle Rage. Kindle Rage is definitely a hidden gem for the system. Uh, very, very solid platformer. Uh, well, would you would you call this a platformer? Yeah, it's an action platformer. Uh, kind of plays like the Valus games. Uh, I like that if you uh, don't attack your enemy, your, your weapon charges up and you have a strong attack. I haven't played this game in a long time. And I actually almost beat it a while back, but I kind of put it down, which I regret because now I got to relearn everything again. But still, very solid game. I don't know if it's going for much now. Hopefully not, because a lot of people need to play this game. Uh, people might have been turned off by the way the cover looks. So the cover is kind of like weird looking. It's like so, that's a, they should have kept the Japanese cover for the game. But oh well.
All right, so let's look for another game. Oh, yes, Magical Poppin'. Uh, one of the first repro games I played. Actually, the game came out in Japan, and uh, uh, that cart right now is like 200 bucks. It wasn't always that way, but um, it was translated in English, and I picked up a repro cart of it, and uh, gosh, I fell in love with this game. Now, this is the type of stuff that we didn't get over here in America, and a lot of people might not know about this game. A fantastic platformer game. Uh, very charming music is fun fun like really good uh control controls really well i mean it's just a just has a lot of charm to it you know easy game to pick up and play and enjoy oh, oh there's a treasure okay cool All right, I got to do Mega Man X2. Uh, this portion is in is in a uh, memory. A green biker dude. Um, he sacrificed he sacrificed himself to protect X. Uh, but I don't know if he was just showing off, trying to do a wheelie when someone's shooting at you. Uh, maybe he's trying to block the shot. I don't know. But either way, uh, green biker dude, Mega Man X will avenge you, and uh, we'll never forget you, brother. All right, guys, so that is a look at my point of view of the Super NES Classic, SNES Classic. Uh, pretty cool device. It's kind of cool that they released Star Fox 2 uh, on it, even though I didn't show footage of that. You know, after waiting for that game, after tw well, not really 20 years because the prototype came out. That's another story. Anyways, with the games it comes with, it's cool, but I would tell people to actually put more on there to make it your ideal system because just coming with the stock games just... It's not enough, you know, for, you know, look at the SNES library. So add more games onto it and enjoy the system. Make it, critique it to what you remember the Super NES being, you know. It actually is one of the first systems I really took inter interest in before the uh, PlayStation. And uh, having this device like this is just really cool. So brings back a lot of memories. So anyways, guys, I hope you like this video. Uh, I'll have some of those titles in the description if you guys want to know what I was playing. And I will see you next time. Thank you.